Hello, everyone, and welcome back. As always, I'm your girl, Candy Washington. And before we dive into today's key key, which is we have a ruling from the judge, and it is against Dirty Diana Jenkins. She was trying to play the victim, and the courts saw right through her facade. So we're going to get into it. We're going to get into it. But before we do that, you know what to do. Go ahead and like this video, subscribe to my channel, and hit the notification bell so you don't miss it when we go live. Also, be sure to share this with a friend because a key key is always better with community. And don't forget to check out the description box down below. Join our newsletter. It is 100% for free. So with that, you guys, let's dive right on into the mess. So before we dive into the breaking news because this just was uh released about an hour maybe two hours ago it's on fox 11 it's on a press release so we're going to get into that but as a quick refresher course um of what happened we all know that garcelle's son Jax, was unfortunately cyber bullied you know there was racist tweets there was you know horrible dms you know if you're one thing that they said was, you know, if it wasn't for your white daddy, we'd have our, you know, our feet on your neck or whatever it said. It was so disgusting. And this poor kid was only 14 years old. Not to mention this is the same exact child at 14 years old that Erica Jane had cussed out at his mother's birthday party. Same child. So Jax has had, unfortunately, a lot of trauma <laughs> during the filming and post-filming of Beverly Hills. And I also want to make a note to what Garcelle said during the reunion last season for Beverly Hills that I think is really important and I think is very telling with this whole situation. And we'll get into to Diana trying to play the victim, which she clearly isn't, and the judge ruled against her on this. Um, Garcelle... We can't forget what she said at the reunion. And she said, I feel as though they went after my children because they wanted me off of the show. And they knew that like the best way to get me off of the show was to go after my children. And I think that is so true and so powerful. I think that they wanted her off of the show. And by they, in my opinion, it's Diana Jenkins I actually don't think Erica Jane, and this might be unpopular, it might be popular, let me know what you think. I actually don't think Erica Jane wanted Garcelle off the show. Low key, I think Erica Jane actually really wanted to be friends with, with Garcelle because Garcelle is really cool. She's that girl. Erica likes to pretend like she's down. You know, she appropriates black culture all the time. She wants to pretend like she's down girl, you know. I do think that Erica actually wanted to be friends with Garcelle, but because of Lisa Renna, Lisa Renna wanting Garcelle off the show, the way Lisa Renna was going after Garcelle, and then Erica sort of just being the, and I'm not absolving Erica, I'm not saying what she did was right or wrong, absolutely not, but the fact that Erica was the one that posted Garcelle's book in the trash when it was Lisa Renna who actually threw her book in the trash, you know, and all of that stuff, when Garcelle was actually being like, hey, Erica, like, maybe you shouldn't pop pills and then drink a bottle of vodka, you know, maybe that's why you're acting crazy and passing out and cussing out children. But then Lisa Renna being like, oh, you're, why are you coming after Erica? Are you trying to make her look bad? Blah, 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 blah. So I think that they wanted her off the show, if that makes sense. And I think it was Lisa Renna who spearheaded the cyber attack against Garcelle's son, Jack. I think it was Diana Jenkins who paid for it. And I think it was Erica Jane who co-signed it. She just went along to get along. You know, maybe she wasn't an active participant, but she didn't stop it. She knew about it. And I think that's a big reason why Lisa Renna was finally fired. And obviously Diana, Diana Jenkins was fired too. That's also another reason why I think Diana Jenkins filed this frivolous lawsuit that the judge has now ruled against. Remember, she was filing all these lawsuits against content creators and podcasters and YouTubers. And then she tried to file a lawsuit against anonymous bots. You know, the people who did the cyber attacks against Jax being like, they are, you know, defaming my name. They're going against me, blah, blah, blah. They're saying I did this. Um, I think she preemptively did that because she knew she was behind it. 
And just like she said at the reunion, because of her privilege and her money and her access, she has, you know, influence on stuff. I think it was a preemptive strike. Let me say I'm going after the bots people so I can control the narrative. I can control the investigation. I can control everything, you know? And then... Then what do you call it? Then also don't forget at the reunion when Diane, when it was revealed, and I'm going to get into the judge's ruling, but I just want to do this context of it because it's been so long, right? But also don't forget at the reunion when it was revealed that Diana Jenkins had threatened Garcelle. Remember, she was like, if anybody comes after me, like you're, I'm coming after you. It was in like the text message and no Bravo contract is going to stop me, blah, blah, blah. Remember that all came out? So she was also threatening Garcelle. And then she primarily did the lawsuit trying to play the victim like, oh, these people are coming after me. They're breaking my privacy. They're saying I did something. They're ruining my reputation. Diana Jenkins, your reputation is garbage, trash, nothing, gangster, ghetto, the worst, the bottom of the barrel, evil devil. And I say that not even talking about the cyber attacks. I'm talking about the other allegations against dirty Diana Jenkins with her book, with her allegedly doing human trafficking and sex trafficking and high class prostitution, whatever you want to call it. You know, how are you saying that anybody out here is damaging your reputation when those allegations have been out here for decades, longer than I probably have even been alive? People have been saying this about you. But yet you want to talk about people on Twitter ruining your reputation? Girl, bye. That's why the judge threw this out. So that's the context of everything that's going on. We have also a couple of things to note before I get into the um, the press release about what the judge said. Let's not also forget that Garcelle also said that she's doing her own internal well, not internal, her own private investigation into the bot gates. She has yet to publicly reveal any results. My gut says, and I want to know what you guys think. My gut says that the private investigation exposed that it was, like I said before, Erica knew it was Lisa Renna's idea. Diana paid for it. I think she turned that over to Bravo, to NBC, they did what they had to do. They got rid of Diana. They got rid of Rena. You know, they kept Erica. And I also think that maybe she also gave these results to the judge or the legal system and stuff like that. That's why I think she hasn't publicly said anything, because I think privately she's handling her business through the legal system and through the bureaucracy at like NBC and stuff. But I do think she has the results. I think she knows what happens, but she's playing it very smart. You know, she's not Garcelle doesn't ever play out her mess or her business online. She's never into a Twitter fight. She's not in anybody's DMs. You know, she's very, very classy, very, very smart, and very, very strategic. Okay? Very strategic. So that's what I think is going on with that situation. That also might be a reason why she got a bump in pay. Yes, she's a fan favorite. Yes, she's that girl. But I also think there might be a little bit of cushioning there given everything that her and her family has gone through. Like, if you actually think about it, she probably has a really nice lawsuit on her hand. You know, her child was threatened and bullied, you know, primarily from somebody on the, on her, one of her co-stars. And at the end of the day, they're not really friends. They're employees. They're coworkers. They're getting a check from Bravo and NBC. So there might be some legalities there, too. So I think Garcelle's playing it very, very smart. Very, very smart. All right. With all of that being said, let's... I'm going to read what just came out today. And this was about a couple hours ago. Okay? It says, and this is from Patch.com. I'm citing my source. Crime and Safety, Patch.com. Judge rules against Real Housewife stars cyberbullying suite, suit, suit, sorry, suit. Ex Beverly Hills housewife Diana Jenkins tried to clear her name in connection to attacks against Garcelle Bouvet's 14 year old son. A judge this week ruled against former Real Housewives of Beverly Hills cast member Diana Jenkins in a lawsuit she filed in an effort to clear her name in connection to cyberbullying against one of her castmates' children. 
Jenkins in September filed a suit against a John Doe defendant, claiming that the unidentified troll used bots to target Garcelle Bouvet's 14-year-old son on social media. Jenkins claimed the mystery person framed her for the racist attacks and heated on-screen exchanges on housewives between her and Bouvet um, helped support that narrative, Rolling Stone reported at the time. Van Nye, Superior Court Judge Virginia Kenny, on Monday ruled that Jenkins' suit does not provide evidence to support Jenkins' single claim for false light invasion of privacy. The judge also denied a request by Jenkins' attorney for a broader order to uncover the people behind the false Instagram accounts used to send 14 racist messages to her former co-star's co child. Jenkins' attorneys had asked the judge to allow them to serve a disposition subpoenas on Comcast Cable Communications, LLC, Verizon Business Network Services, LLC, Colo Crossing, Crossing, Cell Scaleway Inc., Interconnects Inc., Lease Web USA Inc., MP Power Communications Corp., and B2 Net Solutions Inc., as known as Servermania USA Inc. Kenny heard arguments on March 23rd and took the issues under submission before ruling Monday. The judge had previously given Jenkins' lawyers authority to present a deposition subpoena to Meta Platforms, Inc., but Jenkins' lawyer said the information obtained was still insufficient to identify the perpetrator. In Monday's ruling, the judge said that she had second thoughts about previously granting the Meta Platform subpoena. Meta owns Instagram. Side note, Meta also owns Facebook. Meta is Facebook, okay? Let's keep going. And as we know, Facebook owns Instagram. So Meta Platforms is, you know, Facebook's new name. Facebook owns Instagram. All right, let's keep going. Jenkins' attorneys maintained their client had an action for false light invasion of privacy claim because the offensive comments about the boy were posted with the attempt to portray Jenkins as the one who directed, orchestrated, participated, or approved them. But the judge disagreed saying she could not find a case that allowed such a, um, attenuated facts to support Jenkins' claims. The reasonable takeaway from anyone reading these posts is that they were created and posted by rabid fans of the program who were supporting Jenkins in her ongoing, highly orchestrated feud with the boy's mother on Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, the judge wrote. So basically the judge is saying, chick, Shut up and sit down. Number one, this reality show is fake. It's orchestrated. Number two, the people who you are trying to sue or, or uncover are actually supporting you, not going against you. So how exactly are you the victim in this situation is basically what the judge is saying. Let's keep going. Dun, 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 dun. Had the individual or individuals who posted these messages created posts that made it appear that they had been authored by the plaintiff, the situation would be different. But here, the users posted these messages with their own user identity, photo, idiosyncratic font and spelling, and unique writing styles. So basically, what the judge is saying right now is, listen, chick, sit down and shut up. Number one, if the bot or the troll, whatever you want to call it, was pretending to be you, was impersonating you, you know, was at Diana Jenkins 101, had your photo on it, and was pretending that they were you, impersonating you, and then sending these racist cyber attacks. That's one thing, because that's somebody who's actually impersonating you and pretending to be you. However, what actually happened in this situation is these trolls and bots were very clearly trolls and bots. They had their own photos, their own usernames. They had their own way of speaking. They were not pretending to be you. They were actually in support of you by attacking this child. Okay, now let's keep going. The judge further said that while some of the postings are vile and hurtful, none show they were written by Jenkins or posted at her direction. So basically they're saying, listen, the people who said these vile and hurtful things didn't actually say them to you. So why do you have an issue with this? 
right? Why are you claiming to be the victim in this situation when these bots were not impersonating you and they were not attacking you directly? Again, she's trying to play the victim. When the truth is, the person who actually has a case would be Garcelle and her son because they were, or he was, the actual target of the vile and hateful and racist cyber attacks. Diana was never a target. Let's keep going. The Instagram users who posted those comments used their own monikers, none of which to, none which include the plaintiff's name the judge wrote. Dun, 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 dun. So basically the judge was like, you need to have several seats. I regret the fact that I gave you a subpoena to, to go against Meta, Facebook, Instagram, and I'm not going to let you go against anybody else. You are not the victim in this situation. So please sit down and shut up. That's basically what the judge said. I'm, I am personally with the judge on this one. I'm with the judge on this one because it's very confu it was always confusing why Diana was the one doing these lawsuits. It wasn't confusing to me because I understood her strategy, which was very malicious. It's like I said earlier, the reason why she did these lawsuits was a preemptive strike. I personally, in my opinion, because we know she likes to sue people, you can't, you can't sue me for my opinion, dirty Diana. You can't. My opinion is that you were behind the bots. And it's my opinion that you did these frivolous lawsuits to preemptively get ahead of it, to say, Wait, what do you mean? I'm doing lawsuits. I'm trying to figure out who's behind it. I'm so confused. I, they're, they're coming after me. It's my privacy. They're going against my good name. That's why I think you did this. Because nothing else makes any type of sense. Just like the judge said, these bots were not coming after you. These bots were actually in support of you. Your TV show is orchestrated and fake, so please sit down. And also, the bots were not impersonating you. They never said that they were you. And the bots even never said that they were acting on her behalf. That's another part. The bots never said, we're saying this because Diana Jenkins told us to. The bots were just in support. Leave Diana alone. If you don't leave her alone, then we're going to do this to you. Those are two different things. It's one thing for me to say, on behalf of Diana Jenkins, I'm coming after you. It's a very different thing for me to say, if you don't leave Diana Jenkins alone, I'm coming after you. One is I am representing Diana Jenkins. On behalf of her, I'm doing this. The other one is I'm doing this because you're doing something I don't want you to do. Those are two very different things. And I think the judge ruled correctly. Because I'm, I, it boggles my mind the level of delusion this woman has, the level of audacity this woman has to pretend like she was the victim in this situation when a 14-year-old child was being bullied. Not only did they threaten his life, if, you're, you, if you didn't have a white daddy, we'd have our foot in your neck. Garcelle also was tearing up when she was talking about how they had sent her son her, I think she, didn't she do Playboy? Shout out to, gosh, shout out to Garcelle and Playboy. You girl, you better work it. Garcelle's gorgeous. You better work, girl. Also, while we're talking about this, let's do a shout out to Garcelle. Let's talk about some good stuff real quick. Wait, first let me finish that thought before my mind goes to the other, other thing. It was not, not only did these bullies, you know, say terrible racist things to him, threaten his life, but they also sent him Garcelle's Playboy photos. So these people were sending inappropriate sexual photos of his mother to him. That's a whole nother different level of, depri of depravity. 
Because racism, honestly, at this point, it's the bottom of the barrel. Oh, you're mad because someone's black. Okay. That's the bottom of the barrel. Like, really? <laughs> that's what you got? You're racist? Okay. Next. That's, that's the bottom of the barrel. Get out of here with the BS. So disgusting. But let's give Garcelle some love and a shout out. Garcelle is booked and busy, okay? She just produced and starred in her Lifetime movie, Black Girl Missing, I think it's called. It's either called Black Girl Missing or something like that. You know, just Google that and that'll pop up. She's booked and she's busy. She's producing. She's acting. She's also in another show. I think it's either on... Um, BT or Hulu or Apple TV, something like that. But she's doing multiple shows. She's booked and she's busy. She's also a spokesperson, I think, for Target. She's great. She's doing the damn thing, okay? She's doing it. So shout out to Garcelle. She stays classy. She's funny. She's hanging out with everybody. She's hobnobbing. She was just at the Oscars, darling. The actual Oscars, not just at that lame Elton John after party that anybody and their mother can sneak into. Because that's the truth. <laughs> like, like, just to be honest, anybody could really sneak into Elton John's party or buy their way in. It's really not that deep or serious. But she's actually booked and busy. So shout out to Garcelle. Shout out to Garcelle. She's gorgeous. She's gorgeous. So wanted to give her some love. Wanted to give her some positivity. Her sons look gorgeous and handsome, very well adjusted. They were with her at the Oscars. She shows them on Instagram. They seem very kind and intelligent and cool and fun. Shout out to her family. They stay winning. Shout out to Oliver. Shout out to Oliver doing the damn thing on Vanderpump Rules. He had all the girls scared. Had Lala in the corner. Had Raquel Rachel in the corner. Oliver was doing the damn thing. Shout out to Oliver with your fine self. Shout out to Oliver. Garcelle and her family is winning. Dirty, Di Dirty Diana Jenkins, please go away. Crawl under the non-relevant rock you came from. Just like the Countess says, money cannot buy you class. And quiet is it's kept, it also can't buy, buy you relevancy. Because you are only relevant, Diana, by proxy. You're only relevant by the people that you attack not because of who you actually are. We're talking about you because we are in defense of Garcelle and her son, not because you were actually that interesting. So girl, bye. Go crawl under the rock you came from and leave everybody alone. Shout out to the court system. You know, <laughs> shout out to the court system. Girl, bye. Garcelle wins all day, every day. Stick around my candy canes because I want to take some of your candy cane questions and comments. But before we do that, you know what to do. Go ahead and like this video. Subscribe to my channel and hit notification bell so you don't miss it when we go live. Also, be sure to share this with a friend because a key key is always better with community. And check out the description box down below and join our newsletter. It is 100% for free. So with that, you guys, let's give some candy cane shout outs. Hey, Foxy, what is up, sweetheart? Yeah, Fox says against the lip liquor. Exactly. I said, hey, Foxy. All right, let's get some more comments. Hey, Tobias. Tobias says, hey, y'all. Aboard, aboard, aboard. I can't wait. Hey, honey bunny. She says, awesome. Hey, sweetheart. Hey, Love and Coco says, hey, beautiful candy canes. What's up, Vanessa? Says, cyberbullying and bullying in general is wrong. Exactly. Juanita says, what happened? Yes, we just got into it. Tobias says, that's my tea. I was so sick of Vanderpump rules. <laughs> yes. Kit Kat says, oh, my gosh. Vanessa says, I feel bad. Yep. Yep. Juanita says, vindication, finally. Exactly. Hey, Love and Coco. It was up. Hey, Joanne. She goes, hi, all. Hey, Foxy. Love and Coco says, hi, Juanita. Deb says, hi, all. Hi, Candy. Hi, Deb. Hey, Love and Coco. Hey, Joanne. I'm going to drop the link in case anybody wants to come up quickly and sound off, but there is no pressure. I'm going to keep going to the comments. Barbara says, Erica knew all about it. That makes her guilty. I agree. I agree. Guilty by association. I think Erica 100% knew. And, she, and if she wasn't complacent, she was complicit. I think it was Lisa Renna's idea. And I think Dirty Diana paid for it. 
That's what I think. Foxy says, hello, Diane. Vanessa says, you don't go after family members. It's ridiculous that the minor child is involved in something so traumatic. I was a bit of bullying my, um, I was a bit of bullying myself. So I get his pain. I'm so sorry you were bullied. Yeah, I get it too. It's not cool. It's not cool. Hi, honey bunny says, hi, love and Coco. Duran says, hi, Coco. Jeff says, hi, love and hi, sweetie. Foxy says, hello. Hi, Kit Kat. What's up, you guys? Oh, I love my kitty kids. You guys are having fun. Honey Bunny says, CPS should get on Diana's behind. Listen, CPS, FBI, IRS, CIA, Interpol, LAPD, whatever it's called in the UK, they all, MI6, they all need to go after dirty Diana Jenkins. I'm still, I'm still confused as how she hasn't been indicted yet on, on her allegations. You know, how come she's never faced any charges? Maybe it's like a Jeffrey Epstein situation. Her clients are so high profile and so, you know, powerful and connected that they know if they bring her down, they could risk being exposed themselves. Maybe it's that type of situation. But I don't understand how you could have decades long allegations like this with no investigation. Even if the investigation was just to clear the name, was just to say, hey, all of these allegations are false, but no investigation? That is crazy to me. That is absolutely crazy to me to have no investigation. That that to me screams corruption and cover up. Because if we were out here and there were decades long allegations that we were, you know, I don't know what I can say on the channel. I don't want to get, you know, knocked down or anything that we were being inappropriate in any manner with minors or just non-consensual with, with other people, I'm pretty sure we would be investigated. I'm pretty sure we would have some type of rep like indictment or something. There would be, there would be some consequence. There would be some repercussion if, you know, us, you know, Jane Doe, John Doe, Joe Schmo had years upon years upon years of allegations against us. You one would think some type of legal authority would step in and be like, hmm, maybe we should just at least ask a couple of questions. But hey, like she said, her money and her privilege gets her off. Vanessa says, bully needs to stop and get a life. Exactly. Barbara says, hi, Foxy. And that's the thing. I don't even think there really were bullies. I think the bullies were Diana, Erica, and Lisa. And they bought the um, the troll farms. And basically, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't like actual people. They basically paid, they paid a person, whoever oversees the software or whatever it is, and they tell them what to say. They give them a certain, you know, um, handles and hashtags to go after. And it's basically artificial. It's like AI. That's why they're called bots. They're like mini robots. Bot stands for robots. They're mini robots that then go out and spam. So it's not even actual bullies. Like, it's not like us sitting here and attacking Garcelle's son. It's a software that they're using to attack Garcelle's son. They're called troll farms. It's sickening. It's sickening. Foxy says, hey, Love and Coco. Hey, sweet friend. Yes. Hey, first name, last name. Laugh my A off. Not Erica being a down girl. <laughs> You know how Erica tries to front like she's down. And it's like, okay, <laughs> Erica, girl, stop. You know, she tries to front. Philly just says, I don't trust anything EG does. She chose to lay down with dogs, run and Jenkins. You get fleas. I agree. I agree. Hey, Sequoia. She goes, hi, Candy, everyone. So it finally came out. Yep. The judge was just like, um, sweetie, no buy. You're not the victim here. Like the judge actually said, in fact, the bots were not acting necessarily on her behalf because I think that, that they would have to do a deeper investigation into it, but they were acting in support of. So the judge was like, what exactly is your issue? The bots were actually supporting you. So why exactly are you suing them? That's basically what the judge was like. You know, it was ridiculous. Hey, Foxy says, Foxy says, right, Felicia. Barbara says, hey, 
hey Deb. Deb says Brenda was behind it all, as we all knew. Dirty Diana paid for it. Exactly. Exactly. Tobias says, Where is the money Diana given? I like, I want to know. <sighs> dirty Diana, she has that dirty money. Her and her ex husband, Roger Jenkins, he fled the UK because he was facing criminal charges of fraud, criminal fraud charges. He was fleeing the UK and she was also implicated in those lawsuits. So that's the thing. They're all a bunch of criminals. <laughs> They're all a bunch of criminals and fraudsters. Stealing from banks, stealing from people, doing weird stuff, doing bankruptcy, having lawsuits, doing this, that, and the third. All of them. Mauricio, PK, Dirty Diana, Tom Girardi. I mean, very, very few of these reality people have a clean background and I get it life happens you know life does happen you know you can be involved in a lawsuit and not be a fraud you can be involved in a lawsuit and not be a bad person of course of course of course of course I'm just talking about these reality folks you know Joanne says I've been missing a lot of lives too many people to watch <laughs> Lovins is at Deb. Hello, gorgeous. Honey Bunny says Diana using her money to bully people into being um into being quiet. Exactly. Deb says, Hey, Love and Coco, how are you, sweetie? Fox says, Oh, I see, Gwen. Great to see you again. Yes. And right after this, we're gonna do a live. I know some people said they're tired of Vanderpump rules, but I'm not tired yet. And Tom Sandoval just talked to TMZ, and I got the video. Uh, so we're going to watch that after we do this live. Felicia said at Foxy. Joanne says, hi. I love it. Yes, Candy Canes. Robin Ness says, sorry, but haha, -ha, Diana. Yes, exactly. First name, last name says, wow. Joanne says, everybody loves you, Foxy. I love you guys too. Ben Leo says, Rena brought her on to take down Sutton and Garcelle with a plan bloop in their faces. Exactly, Ben. Exactly. Rena really thought she could use Dirty Diana to take down Sutton and Garcelle 100%. Because like Dirty Diana said when she first got there, oh, Sutton, you're, you're, you're sloppy with your words. Or she says something like that. I can't remember. You're, you're sloppy or you're loose or something like that with your words. And Sutton was just like, you just met me. What? You know, in her Sutton voice. So Dirty Diana came very, very scripted. She had her marching orders. It was very, very scripted. She knew who she was going to go after. She knew who she wanted to take down. It was very clear. And then when she said to Garcelle in the middle of a conversation that literally had nothing to do with anything, she was like, oh, you're so guarded. And Garcelle was like, wait, what are you talking about? We're not even talking about me right now. And then she was like, oh, what? We're not. Like, you could tell that, like, she knew the lines she had to say, but she was so, and I don't mean this in a negative way I just mean in an actual descriptive way she was too stupid and she didn't know when to say them you know I don't like calling people names so I'm not calling it her stupid I'm calling that she was stupid in that moment that she didn't realize this isn't the time where you say your line you know what I mean Love and Coco says that Deb, it's storming here. Got the crock pot going. How are you? Yes, crock pot. Yes. Joanna says, Great, Deb. Miss T says, Hello, hello, Miss T. What's up? Tobias says, I'm watching the whole season now. It's so fresh to me. It was a real mess. Yes. Fox says, I'll thank you so much. Love you too. Miss T says, At Coco. Hey, Deb. Love and says, Hi, beautiful. I love it. I love it. Ah, uh, first name, last name said not decades. Dad says Miss T. Miss T says no more lip. No, please no more um, lip licking. I mean, she's fired. So thank goodness. Love and Coco says she's getting ready to lick her lips and not pick. <laughs> Deb says, I just think Garcelle is the best housewife in my opinion. I love Garcelle. I love her. Felicia says, Candy, that makes sense. Garcelle never puts her cards on the table. She doesn't. Garcelle plays it very, very close to the chest. Very strategic, very strategic. She plays it very close to the, to the chest and she stays winning. She's booked. She's busy. Her family is gorgeous. They're winning. You know what I mean? She's doing great. Garcelle's living it. She's, she's doing the damn thing. I'm, I'm here for it. Love and Coco says has Miss T. I love it. Duane says, are her lips crooked? It's probably the filler. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's probably the filler not settling right. 
You know, they probably injected one side too much. Miss T says, imagine the footage we didn't see. Exactly. Dev says, Candy always has this opinion about these three cyber bullies. Yup, I've always had that opinion. Yup. My conspiracy theories usually come true, man. Tobias says, Peacock is no bravo. They are not here to play. Exactly. Felicia says, Lisa Renna, Erica, and DJ thought they were untouchable. Yeah, they really thought they were doing something. Like, they really thought they were doing something. They thought they were taking down Kathy. They thought they were sticking it to Garcelle. They really thought they were doing something. And look at them now. Bravo was like, really? Hold my rosé. We're going to fire Renna. We're going to fire Diana. We're going to put Erica on an island by herself so we can still milk that Girardi news, those Girardi ratings, right? But we're going to bring back Camille. We're going to bring back Kim Richards. We're going to bring back Denise Richards. We're going to bring back, and word on the street, LVP was spotted filming and Carlton. So hold our rosé. You think you're getting over on us? Watch this. I think it's going to be a fantastic season. They're going, they're bringing back all of these OGs and veterans. I'm excited to see how it all shakes out. I really am. I really am. Joanne says, right, Miss T. Thank you, Miss T. Fox says, a bee might have stung her lips. I don't blame it. Exactly. Hey, Mary Mother of God. She says, Team Garcelle. Yes. Foxy says, definitely Team Garcelle. Duane says, yes, Garcelle. Tobias says, Diana and her blob fish head. Bloop. Mary Mother of God. Says, Dirty Diana's lip look heinous. They really do. That's right, you guys. If you love Garcelle, hit that like button. Hit that like button. Joanne's laughing. I love it. Love and Coco says, hey to Mary. Felicia says, thumbs up up hey love and coco joanne says miss t i love your picture beautiful yes miss t is gorgeous she is gorgeous hey daphne t thank you so much hey miss t says garcella is doing the right way don't get mad get justice and stay mad exactly i'm very very interested in seeing the dynamic between erica and garcella this season I think that's going to be one relationship to watch. Do you know what I mean? I really think that's going to be one relationship to watch. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. Joanne says, I don't know how to put my picture up. Oh, no. <laughs> Tobias says, Diana have a really dirty side to her. Yes. Yes. Miss T says, thank you. That's so sweet. Yay. I love it. Love and Co says, Diana is gross. Miss T says, community is better with a kiki. That's right, you guys. Yes, yes, yes. Foxy says, you can do it from a laptop. We have a picture of you there. Felicia says, Felicia says, Diana Jenkins is a low class with money. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing. You know, money doesn't buy you class. You can have all the money in the world and still be such an awful, off-putting person. Or you could not have a lot of money and be the most lovely, amazing, classy person in the world. You know, it's so true. Deb says to make terroristic threats shows how much fame means to Rena, EJ, Dirty, Diana, Ky and Kyle, and yep, and maybe Dorit. Who else knew? We did because of candy detective work. Exactly. This is the thing. I don't think that, I don't think maybe between Kyle and Dorit of who knew before it happened, I actually think they probably told Dorit before they told Kyle. Because I think that they pretend to be Kyle's friend, but they don't actually really mess with Kyle like that. I think they don't respect Kyle. I think they laugh at Kyle. I don't think that they really ride with her like that. But they pretend in her face because they know that, you know, she's the OG. She has it really end with Bravo and Andy. And that if you can stay good with Kyle, you have more of an anchor on the show. But I don't think that they actually really mess with Kyle like that. That's why. And again, I'm not saying that Kyle is innocent because I don't think she is at all. I think that she does her own dirt. She does her own pot stirring and deflection and lying, this, that, and the third. But I think that's why she, she was able to get duped by Rinna and Erica. Uh, now I'm talking more about the Kathy stuff. Because I think Kyle thought she was running the show. Oh, I'm going to get the girls to go after my sisters, blah, 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 blah. But they actually had the master plan that they wanted to befriend Kyle, but also kind of bump Kyle off while also taking off Kathy. And then she realized at the very, very end when she was having the, her anxiety pa panic attacks that she actually got set up for the okie doke. 
But I do think now, I do think Kyle, I think everybody really knows who was really behind it at this point. Miss T says, listen, chick, sit down and shut up loudly. Yes. Fox says, the mean girls will get their calmer, I think. 100%. People always do. Joanne says, my laptop is out of service. Well, for me, I have my picture on Instagram, though. Yes, Joanne. Felicia says, at Foxy, I hope sooner than later. Miss T says, Diana worked overtime by keeping this going. She really did. She really did. Foxy says, um, oh, I see, Joanne. When you get it back, try try to get your pick on there. Mm-hmm. Just go to, like, um... Is it settings? It's like channel settings and you can change it. I think it's called like branding or something like that. DM says, don't care for either of these two ladies. Sneeze, sneeze. Fox says, hope so too, Felicia. Miss T says, Diana put herself in this. Yep. Hey, Riley Connoisseur, those lips on Diana. Does she think they look good? <laughs> Joanna says, oh, I have it. I forgot to use it, Foxy. Foxy says, Diana is evil to the very core. I, I agree. I agree. And like, I do think there are evil people in this world. I think there's good people. Well, you know what? Actually, let me put it this way. I, yeah, I do think that there are evil people in this world. And then I think that there are people who are really good people. I think that there are good people who do bad things. And I think that there are bad people who do bad things. And I think that there are bad people who do good things. And then of course there's good people who do good things, but even beyond that, I do think that there are people who are evil. Foxy says, oh, no, sorry to hear that. Miss T says, yes, yes, yes. Joanne's laughing. Tobias says, Madame, <laughs> the pimp of it all is full of it. Exactly. Joanne says she's guilty as F. Exactly. Like, how come Miss T says bots, a.k.a. Diana, how come Diana has never been investigated? Or... <laughs> Maybe she is being investigated and they're just keeping it very close to the chest and under wraps. Because this is the thing. She really, I don't understand those weird narcissistic personalities where it's like, if you are doing all of this stuff, allegedly we'll say, why would you then go on a reality TV show to be exposed? And they do it all of the time. You know, there's a laundry list at this point, not just Bravo people, but a lot of, because there's a lot of reality TV channels and shows out there, not just Bravo, but there's like a laundry list of all of these people who are doing, I mean, horrific things, horrific things from taking, like literally even from like taking other people's lives to being inappropriate with chil with children to fraud. You know, the saddest part is like money is like the least of the evils of what some of these people have done. Stealing money at honestly is like the least of the evils when you think about what some of these other people have done. Dirty Diana, stealing money is the least of the evils considering all the other allegations against her. Look at the Duggars, you know, their family protected one of the boys when he was inappropriate with his sisters. And then now he's in prison because he had inappropriate pictures of children. You get what I'm saying? But they had the audacity to go on reality TV and act like they were supposed to be the example of an American family. Get the hell out of here. Look at the, the is it the Chrisleys? The Chrisleys, right? Look at them. Both of them are in jail for fraud. And then their other son just got arrested. And yet they're on TV acting like they're supposed to be the example of, you know, of um, the American dream, you know, making it good and getting all the money and living this high life. These people are sick. Look at the guy from Family Feud who just got arrested for allegedly, you know, taking the life of his wife. He was on Family Feud a couple years ago talking about he never should have said I do. Like these people... It's crazy. It's really sick and really crazy. That like fame is more of a drug than anything else in this world. Look at Jen Shaw. She's doing letters from Sing Sing. You know, she's doing letters now and her weird coach saw husband who is her accomplice, he should be in jail right along with her, is up her on YouTube reading her letters. Like how sick is that? You literally are in federal prison for defrauding elderly people out of their retirement money that they were going to live off of for the rest of their lives. 
and you spent it on fake Chanel bags, horrible plastic surgery and fillers, and a whack outfit, because your because your style sucks. Money can't buy you style either, or it should buy you at least a good stylist. And you have the audacity to be doing, you know, letters from prison and your weird husband is reading them on YouTube and then charging people to be on your website. It's it's crazy. Like, it's literally crazy when you really think about it. And then you have so many good hearted quote. And I'll, I'm only saying quote, like not even quote, but like just like normal people who are just like living their lives. You know, they just like want to, you know, put food on the table you know, pay the mortgage, have love, take care of their kids, hang out with their friends, you know, just have like a decent life. It's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. It's crazy. Duane says, plus racist when they said, good thing you have a white daddy. Yup. Janice says, those lips gross. Um, Honey Bunny says, you mean fancy. That's right. Yes, Garcelle is fancy. Hey, Coco Stina. Um, what good name from Diana Jenkins? She literally worked as a Pro, uh, pro, uh, night walker before she, um, and associated with Jeff, with Jeffrey Epstein. Exactly. Exactly. I didn't want to say the P word just because get doxxed, but I agree with you. Um, not doxxed, but knocked. You know what I mean? Thank you, Coco. I agree. Tobias says, y'all are crazy if you think I go after your sweetheart, Jex. Diana. Yeah. She's a mess. Deb says, Diana, Kyle, and Rena all gaslit everyone saying it was happening to their kids too. They even put ourselves Playboy spread online to Jack's terroristic threats. Yup. Yeah, they all tried to play the victim. And it's just like, girl, nobody has come for your children the way that people have come for Jack's. It's ridiculous. Honey Bunny says, Garcelle is fancy in real life. Yes, she is. Yes, she is. Joanne says, Deb, yep. Juanita says, I saw it. Joanne says, she is so beautiful. Chocolate Chunk says, hey, everyone. Yes, Love Coco says, please like, subscribe, become a member, donate. Yeah, thank you, guys. Uh, Deb says, Joanne, that was so disgusting. Plus, it was occurring um, during or after 1-6. The country was so filled with hatred and racism. I hate it, Beverly Hills, then for Jack. Yeah, I agree. Tobias says, um, Garcelle, yes. Mwah, Garcelle's the best. Joanne says, hey, Chocolate. Jay says, Garcelle is a true beauty. She's gorgeous. She's gorgeous. She's killing it. Devi says, hey, guys, are so cute. Chocolate says, at Joanne. Joanne says, Deb, yes, me too. Hey, reality connoisseur says, Diana was threatened by Garcelle. That part. Garcelle carries herself with class and is gorgeous naturally. You know the opposite of Diana. That part. That part. Hey, Eleven Coco says, at Jay, good to see you. Deb says, our reality TV was flavored with hate just as our country was. I was glued to both and resented Rena for being so dirty. Me too, me too. Hey, Gossip News says, hey, Candy and everyone. Hey, sweetheart. Joanne says, Deb, absolutely. Deb says, hey. Love and Coco says, if you are just watching, please join us. We love to chat with you. That's right. Hey, Deb says, Joanne, you felt that too? I sure did. Gossip News says, I knew Diana was slimy. Hey, DGF67 says, girl, bye. That part. Jay says, you can clearly see Diana has an ugly soul compared to Garcelle. Yeah, Garcelle's a good one. She's a good egg. She really is. Um, Coco Extina says, hope Diana gets sued for bullying a child online. I hope so too. I hope so too. But I, I don't think it's going to happen. I think Garcelle got the results of the investigation. I think she took it to NBC. I think NBC handled it. I think they gave Garcelle a little bump in the pay. They obviously fired Diana and Rena. And I think that's where they'll leave it. I, I think that's where it'll be. I, I think that this will probably be the last we really hear about uh, Botgate and the cyber attacks and everything, particularly because the judge was just like, girl, get the hell out of my court. Like, girl, bye. Like, we're not doing this. You're wasting taxpayers' money, boo-boo. Like, get out of here. You know? Gossip News says, hey, Deb. Joanne says, De Joanne says, Deb, definitely. Hey, Brooklyn. Says, hi, Candy. Hey, sweetheart. Love and Coco says, hey, Gossip News. Deb says, hey. All right, you guys. Hey, Eric. Eric says, hello, everyone. Hola, Candy. I just came in. Was it proved that Diana did it? It wasn't proved that Diana did it. It was the judge threw out her frivolous whack. I'm going to get behind the anonymous bot lawsuit, which to me, if I'm using my logical brain, 
I'm like, the only reason why she even did the lawsuit anyway was a preemptive strike because she knew she was behind it. You know? And I think the jo- the the judge saw through that. She was like, you're not the victim here. The child is the victim. In fact, the bots were in support of you, not actually against you. So you don't actually really have a leg to stand on. And 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 dismissed it or threw it out or ruled against whatever it's called. You know, I'm not a lawyer. I just play one on YouTube. <laughs> Love him, Coco. What's up, sweetheart? Hey, gossip news. The tongue licking was totally disgusting for an older woman to do. Whenever she did it, I had to change the channel. This is the thing. I say I don't care how old you are. 22, 42, 52, 82. Lick your lips, baby. However, it's gross when she does it. You know, it's gross when Diana does it. I'm personalizing it. You want to be 82 and licking your lips? Lick away. But this chick, girl, stop licking. Debbie says, so wondering if I got this right. Diana investigated herself when she supposedly was going after those behind the bots. That part. Garcelle knew from the start. Diana messed with the wrong woman. Exactly, Debbie. Exactly. One, exactly. Joanne says, Erica absolutely knew and didn't care. Yeah. Yeah, I think. I, this is the thing. I think Erica's a big coward. I don't know why they're always like, we're so scared of Erica. We're so scared of Erica. Why? Erica, to me, just looks like she's tall and funky with, like, patchouli oil up her hoo-ha. Remember she said that when she went to the party? That Kyle had given her, like, um, it was, like, CBD or TBH or TBC, something, t- some type of extract oil, whatever it was, and she put it on her lady part. Remember? at Crystal's house, and she said she didn't have any underwear on. Like, ew. That's going to throw off your pH balance, boo-boo. That's not going to be good. That's nasty. Hey, Juanita. Shout out to Juanita. She's a channel member. Thank you, sweetheart. She goes, hello, Deb and Mads. Hey, Coco Xena says, hi, love and Coco. Hey, love and Coco says, hi, glad you made it. Yes. Juanita says, of course they knew. Exactly. Eric is smiling. Deb says, Juanita, hey, cutie pie. Brooklyn says, hi, Candy. I finally made your live chat. Welcome to the chat. The chat is lit. It goes down in the chat. That's why I read your comments. It goes, it it goes down the chat. The chat stays lit. And I love you guys. You guys are funny. You're smart. You're hilarious. My candy canes hold it down. The chat is lit. Welcome. 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 Honey Bunny says, exactly. She's getting away with too much. Yep. Love and Coco says, hey. Joan says, rich people get away with a lot. That part. That part. I mean, and, and this, I mean, it's not even deniable. It's like, it's not even deniable the injustice that our legal system does with the haves versus the have nots. It's always seems to be like a David versus Goliath situation. He who has the most money and power and influence wins. Not always. And I don't want to be cynical and I don't want to have that belief, but just looking at it objectively, it's just really sad. It's really sad. Deb says, exactly, Candy. Powerful wealth can keep you from jail. Yup, look at our previous guys in office like Rudy O. Exactly. Look at um freaking Tom Girardi. <laughs> he ran a, a, a almost billion-dollar Ponzi scheme for four, for four decades. Come on. It's ridiculous. Levin Coco says, Brooklyn, glad you made it. Faxes says, so true. Hey, honey, bunny, we'd be on the front page news online and, and in paper. Exactly. Let one of us have not even half but like a like a couple of the allegations these people have girl they would be hauling us off we'd be thrown under the jail please kids taken away car repossessed house foreclosed we'd be goners we would be goners brooklyn says thank you levin gossip news says hey foxy Tobias says, I want that link, but I'm scared. Oh, no. I'll drop it again if you want to come. You can come up. I'll drop it again. But there's no pressure, Tobias. Only come if you want to. If you don't, it's all good. Stay in the chat. It's lit. Coco Xena says, Diana would also pimp out Lindsay Lohan and, and Hayden. Yup. And she had a high profile clients from Saudi Arabia that would pay to be with young actors. That is what I think happened. Shout out to Amanda Bynes. Can we pray for her? Hey, Julius, let's, let's pray for Amanda Bynes because I think she might have been one of the people too. And she just got under another psychiatric hold. Mm-hmm. 
think about what was going on with these young actors, like even like Selena Gomez and Justin Bieber and Britney Spears and Jessica Simpson. What the hell is going on with her right now? Um, Lindsay Lohan had a lot going on. Hayden Panettiere, and she lost her damn mind too. So you have to think. And then the other people have come out and talked about what has happened to them being the young actors and everything. Because if there is this casting couch for adults, unfortunately and sickening and sickeningly there sure as hell is one for the children too and that is disgusting and sad and honestly i don't want to think about it too much because it's just very very sad but 100 percent. hey julius hey girl gossip news i'm gonna bring you up too okay Ooh, bring up gossip too i want to hear his, her perspective ah! hey. hey guys Hey, you guys want to sound off? Uh, Julius, you go first because I pulled you up first, and then oh. gossip news. Then you sound off, sweetheart. Whew, I mean, I'm glad that Garcia. I think I'm saying her name right because I never knew her name. You uh, yourself? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm glad she's getting the answers that she needs because you know nobody likes when their children are played with exactly and i just have to say this because this is the model that i live by mm -hmm. you, you want to mess with me do all the type cyber stalking whatever mm -hmm. um you know i'm talking about like if i was you know the actress i know her as the actress from the jamie fox show oh garcelle uh, yeah um if like if I was her, if folks were coming after me, you know what? It wouldn't bother me. But the moment you come after my children, yep. it's a problem. And this, you know, woman, other woman, I just have to say, Carcel is just like aging gracefully. She is like looking fabulous. She just does. have to say, it's like she's just looking fabulous. Yeah. Wait, Julius, wait for one second. I gotta shout out Sierra. Sierra, Sierra, I love you. Sierra says, not got ruled against, laughing my A off. The judge said, take your white supremacy elsewhere, witch. You have no power here. <laughs> I mean, it, it it be like that. Exactly. Shout out to Sierra. Content. Yes. Keep going, Julius. I mean, she's, I mean, Garcia is just looking gorgeous. I, I like, like, if you remember the Jamie Foxx show. Mm-hmm. Even though she was younger at the time, she looks like, to me, I don't see any kind of plastic surgery, any kind of nothing. She looks yeah. fabulous. Now, this, I don't know if she's like a Barbie doll or... <laughs> Diana? Yeah, huh. Uh, a couple of videos, like when I first heard her speak, something was just fishy, so I just kind of felt fishy about that woman mm -hmm. you know her whole aura and stuff is just off and um yeah i'm not surprised that she was found to be behind it exactly okay gossip news you ready boo boo oh i'm always ready yes first of all i knew diana was behind it even before we saw the reunion Yep. It's the, in Diana's favor. She literally went after Sutton for no apparent reason. Mm -hmm. You went after Garcelle because she stood up for Sutton. And I'm like, yet yeah, this is Crystal's friend. Yet this is not becoming Erica and Lisa's friend. Not surprised. Mm -hmm. Oh, so. I am going to say this. I'm glad she's off my TV screen because if I have to see her lick her lips one more time, <laughs> I was going to throw my TV out, out of the living room. I couldn't. Mm -hmm. I could not. But I'm actually surprised. I'm glad that they're bringing back all the ex housewives that Lisa ran off. Me too. Because I want... I'm. I'm 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 excited to see Kim and Camille. Mm -hmm. Carton, I'm fine with her. I want to see Lisa Vanderpump back. I need her back because I need her to grab the Kyle. Me too. Denise, 
I'm okay with her. I just need her to go after Erica. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. I think I think Carlton is definitely gonna go after Kyle. I think that Camille is gonna go after Dorit and yep. Kyle. Unless Kyle is gonna be in like butt licking mode. I think Kyle's going to be in suck up mode because she yep. now realizes she's never been a fan favorite and she never will. And she knows that she needs reputation rehab. So I think Kyle is going to be in butt kissing mode. I think she's going to be all up Garcelle's butt. I think she's going to be all up um, Camille's butt. I think she's going to think her and Dorit are back being friends while Dorit and Mauricio go sneak off into the bungalow on the, onto the left to do what they got to do. Um, I think Kyle and Erica might have some issues. Kyle and Crystal are definitely going to knock heads, apparently. So I want to see how all of that's going to go down. But I'm excited for the OGs and the veterans to come. I think it's going to be great. I have to say, I heard a little bit while ago that there was some speculation regarding somebody's man, I think, from this franchise was having an affair because they're like, because I guess like the wife wasn't in like the front seat or something. Yeah, that's Kyle, Dorit, and Mauricio. Yep. Okay. So I guess I, I guess I was talking about the right person. I mean, I don't know. I'm not going to speculate. Um, like I said, I don't know. But who knows at this, at this rate? No. Tobias said, where is Yolanda? Yolanda is living her best life. She's like, I can't be bothered. But <laughs> where they're bring back Joyce. Back. Joyce, Yolanda. Actually, you know what, you guys? I wonder if the reason why they're bringing back all of the OGs is because they couldn't get casting together to find new talent. Like, what yeah. happened to all of the speculated new people coming? It was, one person was, was supposed to be Kathy Hilton's friend. Another one was supposed to be one of Crystal's uh, groups of four, one of the 14 girls. Like, maybe they couldn't get it together to find new, fresh people. So instead, they're mm -hmm. sort of doing like an ultimate girls trip, Beverly Hills edition. But also, there isn't it. It was speculation that Dorit was bringing one of her friends on because she fit the Beverly Hills st status. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what happened to that? That is also true, and also wondering there because somehow on Twitter they're saying that they're bringing back Joyce. I'm like, I don't see Joyce coming back. Yeah, Cynthia was also spotted filming too. Right. Now, this might be an unpopular opinion, y'all, but I always share my opinion. I don't know. Oh, don't come at me. I don't know if Cynthia's a fit for Beverly Hills. No, I don't think so. All right, good, good, good. I was like, let me share my opinion. I don't think she's a chemistry fit for Beverly Hills. Also because Cynthia is so beta- like, who's going to be the alpha to her beta? Because, like, in any situation, she's the beta chick. You know, she used to be beta to Nini. She used to be beta to Peter. She used to be beta to Kenya. She used to be beta to Mike Hill. Then And then when she was on Celebrity Big Brother, she was beta to um, Carlson, Carson Kressley. She yeah. Was to him. So Cynthia has always played that codependent beta role where the person who's like the bigger personality she sort of windmills for and like takes on their personality and sort of windmills for them so i wonder and i know that she's been filming and stuff but it's either going to be really bad or it's going to be like surprisingly brilliant but it's not going to be like in the middle do you know what i mean right hmm. and also wondering if Cynthia's filming with Beverly Hills because I remember season one of Real Housewives Ultimate Girls Trip, her and Kyle got into it. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if it's like they're bringing Cynthia in to see how Kyle's going to react to her being there. But also, I'm like, mm -hmm. Cynthia's, Cynthia was boring on Atlanta. That part. That's what I'm saying. Like, I don't know 
what she's going to give to a Beverly Hills. And But the only reason why I think Cynthia and Kyle didn't get along was because Kenya was being very messy. Like, right. I think without Kenya, I don't really see Cynthia having a beef with anybody. Because Cynthia's, because again, she's beta. All of Cynthia's problems are because she's taking on somebody else's problem. <laughs> you know what I mean? She's either with, you know, she's defending Nini, defending Carlson, defending Kenya, or like being like, why is Ken- Kenya liking these girls more than me? Like Ultimate Girls Trip, Kenya did Cynthia so dirty. And so Cynthia really got played. So I think without Kenya, I think Cynthia has the opportunity to sh- actually have her own personality shine. I'm just not sure it's really there. I don't think I don't think it will be there for Spiffley Hills. That's what I'm saying. Like I don't I just don't like I don't, I, see, it. I don't see it. Like we talked about this before. Um I think Taylor Armstrong, you know, she's the first housewife to cross over. I think that right. was actually brilliant. She was on Beverly Hills. Then, you know, she was fired, let go, which is fine. You know, people get fired. Who cares? Then right. she did on the girls trip. And then now she's on OC. And now she's been b- bumped up to a full-time orange holder on OC. So yeah. I think that is a successful crossover. But I think it's because Taylor makes sense, you know, yeah. with, with the girls of the OC. Very similar to how I was saying with more so to Cynthia. I don't think Heather Dubrow is a chemistry fit for Beverly Hills either. No, you know, I, if anything, I could see her in New York, but not it's... Beverly Hills. Beverly Hills is a very special energy, and each and it shouldn't be interchangeable like that. Like I think each city should have its own particular aesthetic, particular vibe. You know what I mean? That right. you should be able to say, "Oh, pop in Atlanta to Beverly Hills like that." I agree because each house, each of the housewife franchises has their own personality. Exactly. Orange County is small, over dramatic. Yeah, Orange County is small, over dramatic. The drama isn't ever anything that like it's non consequential. Like right. nothing's really at stake in the OC, and that's why we. It got a little boring the last years, but before that's why it was so amazing because it was actually what it was supposed to be, an escape where they're fighting over a cake or champagne being spilled or stupid stuff like that. Whose yacht are we going to go on? That was like the fun stuff because their mess really had no real true consequences. The stakes weren't that high. Heather Lee Bro having a meltdown because somebody ate a piece of her cake. You touched my cake? You I know, remember like, that. You know, and it was like, but it was brilliant. It's because that, it's just like, that's, that's the type of drama I want to see. Now yeah. you're I, calling my child, uh, you know, thank God you have a white daddy or my foot would be on the neck. Like I, that I don't need right now. <laughs> or the whole, <laughs> my know? husband's gay. That whole thing was freaking, oh Lord. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Exactly. But, uh, thank you, you gotta- Renee. <laughs> oh, go ahead. You guys talking about one of the ladies having a meltdown. Um, is that like what the famous um, meme is over with the cat? <laughs> oh, you mean the one with Taylor? That's Taylor. I forgot what she was having a meltdown about. Oh, that was when season two, when yeah, Brandy and her were going at it. Yep. And she said, I have never been rude to you. And I got to say, Ultimate Girls Trip Season 2 when Brandy said, I, I like seeing Taylor start screaming. It just reminds me of the cat meme. I'm like, I'm like, Taylor. I'm like, Brandy. Uh-huh. I just I feel like that's brought her some money, like, at this point. That, that had to bring her some money. I mean, that me, the, the I mean, the meme was funny because you, because whenever, because everybody uses that meme, Whenever it comes to an issue where everyone's arguing and you just see Taylor yelling and you just see the cat on the next side of the table. But How does I that think give her money though. I don't think it gives her money. I think yeah. it brought back up her relevant relevancy. Yeah. Because yeah. I knew she did the book on her on her part of her marriage. Mm-hmm. That brought in money. So I think yeah, Taylor but I also think Taylor has grown to where she's able to work past those issues that she had in the past. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, when she saw Brandy, she got triggered as much as anyone would do. Yep. But she managed to work through it. Mm-hmm. And Cynthia don't Cynthia will either should either stay in Atlanta. I don't think she's fit for Miami or Potomac. I agree. Hey, speak with your girl Marcella. She says, Hey Kenny the Kitty Games. Hey Marcella. Hey. I agree. It's not ugh, it's it's a weird oh, sure. Okay, I was wrong. That was Camille and Taylor, not Brandy. I don't know. Uh, and if it, it's season two, is probably Camille. Yeah, it was Camille because Brandy yeah. wasn't there until like season five or six or something like that. Four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Four. I hope. I hope. I hope. I hope. I hope. I hope. I don't want to, and I don't want to bring everything back to race. But I really, if they're bringing Cynthia in, she has to get along with herself. I don't want to see any more black on bl black girl on black girl crime. I don't want to see it anymore. I don't, I don't want to see it either. I want them to get along. I want them to. I want them to be friends. I want them to key key. They don't have to be best friends, but I don't want any. I don't want another Cherie, where she comes yeah. in and she completely throws Garcelle under the bus, being a pick me. And Cynthia can have very pick me vibes. So that I, do, I do not want. I do not want another Sheree situation where you come in, you know, trying to get in good with these girls and you throw the other black girl under the bus for it. Like, I just personally, as a black woman, I don't want to see it. You don't I don't want to see it either. Don't go after each other. We don't need another Kenya. We do you know, not. Kenya attacking Ebony K. Witt. E Ebony K. Williams, Kenya attacking Garcelle, Kenya playing the hell out of uh, Cynthia. Yeah. Well, like, Kenya attacked a bunch, of, a bunch of other people. She always she, does that. She, it's oh, Kenya's M.O. Oh, she went after, um, what's her face? Um, Kim Zosia. No, Gertie. Gertie, yes. Oh, and then Gertie trying to clean it up. She's like, oh, no, we're both queens. We can fix our house. I was like, Gertie, you know Kenya paid you dust. <laughs> you, said oh, it. you said it. She was like, what show are you on? Basically the equivalent of, I don't know her. Like, who are you? What, sh what show are you on? Kenya, Kenya played Gertie. Gertie told it, and she tried to reel it back on, but you told it, Gertie. You know? Oh. Also, if I remember, she also went after Vicky at BravoCon. That's another thing. Kenya likes to she's very so. rise out of people. She does things for a moment. It's like, girl, leave Vicky alone. Vic, like Vicky Gumbleson isn't coming for you, Kenya. Like, girl, <laughs> like, 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 come on. Like, let's talk about it. You really think Vicky Gumbleson? Vicky Gumbleson probably doesn't know who Kenya is. Not in a I don't know you way, but like, you know, Vicky's a little. You know, whoop it up, cool little underlays. Like Vicky Gumbleson isn't thinking about Kenya more. Right. And I think that was like Kenya came for Ramona. Ramona was like, What? Yep. You know? She ran after Ramona. She ran after Vicky. Vicky. Yep. And like the whole thing about Kenya butting into Ashley and Vicky's thing wasn't about Kenya. Ashley was I wouldn't say standing up. She she was mildly standing up for herself in a way. But it's like that's between Ashley and Vicky. Mm hmm I guess some, some folks, you know, talking about the overbranch housewives. I guess whatever this Diana lady is connected to by some of the comments, um that I guess the Teresa girl, her husband does the same thing, I guess. Oh, God, don't remind me of Jimbo. I mean, I'm the majority of them are doing Ponzi schemes, MLM schemes, you know, pimping it and doing it, you know, flipping it. Like, it's a lot. The Gorgas, all of their drama and all of their stuff. Apollo, Phaedra, a lot of them. Not, not to mention the people who aren't even on Bravo. All of those weird people who are doing stuff. It's crazy. I'm telling you, Bravo's just getting messed. Mm -hmm. 
And I, I don't, I don't know what it is. I, I just find it funny. I think like, you know, we was getting like tantrum drama from like New Jersey and stuff like that because that's really what I see like that drama as currently, mm-hmm. tantrum drama. But it's just like when this whole thing with the Santa Ball guy, uh huh, Rachel. <coughs> The other time and all of that. I don't know. I this I th- that drama like foretold a whole lid of like, oh yeah, now we're gonna talk about this. Mm-hmm. All right, yeah, I gotta I gotta head off because I got sounds good. Yeah, I'm about to go do it. I just wanted to hop on and say hey yes, thank you, sweetheart. Thank you. Oh, all right, thank you, sweetheart. Talk to you soon. All right, you guys. Shout out to everybody who did comments. I think I got to everybody. If I didn't, I'm sorry. But with that, you guys, we are going to wrap this up because we are about to jump to, in a couple of minutes, we are going to jump to Tom Sandoval breaking his silence with TMZ on the whole Raquel, Rachel, Ariana situation. So we're going to hop to that live in a little bit. But before we do that, As always, leave your questions, leave your comments, leave your conspiracy theories down below. And before we do that, you know what to do. Go ahead and like this video, subscribe to my channel, and hit the notification bell so you don't miss it when we go live. Also, be sure to share this with a friend because a key key is always better with community. And check out the description box down below and join our newsletter. It is 100% for free. Hi, Hanny Hunter goes, oh my gosh, finally Candy is back with Real Housewives of Beverly Hills lives. I know, I was deep in Vanderpump Rules. I was deep into it. Because this is the thing, I was like, Kyle and Ozempic, I just, I can't. I can't, Kyle, I can't. But the juice is flowing, new stuff is coming. I love it. Hanny says, I missed it all. Somebody give me that tea real quick, please. Yes, free play gang thank you guys thank you tobias thank you foxy thank you felicia thank you joanne shout out to all the candy canes who joined shout out to gossip news and julius for coming up and chatting with me i love you guys and i will talk to you next time bye (laughs) thank you felicia thank you joanne i love you guys all right bye